This Raspberry Pi 5 here is going to be the future home of my R stack. And one of the most important steps of an R stack is maintaining privacy. And we're going to be doing that with a VPN, specifically using the Gluten Docker container. Now, why may you want to do this? Well, when you download Linux ISOs through a torrent client, your public IP address is visible and damn it, it's nobody's business if you want to be a seeder for Hannah Montana Linux. So on this Pi 5 here, we are going to be setting up Ubuntu server, installing Docker, launching Protainer to easily manage our containers, setting up the Gluten VPN, of course, and then showing you how to pass through containers, whether they be in the same Docker Compose file or not, through it to actually use the VPN on those Docker containers networks. This video is not sponsored, but a big thank you to Raztech for actually sending over this and their starter kit comes with a real nice case, some heat sinks here, a fan, which I've concluded in a previous video is basically essential as the thermals of using these heat sinks in the fan versus not is dramatic. And this kit does include some other stuff to kind of help you get started with the platform. So thank you to them. So first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and throw Ubuntu server on this. I got our SD card here, plug it on in, and we are going to use the Pi Imager application. This is cross-platform, so you could use it on just about anything. Uh, choose a device here. This is going to be on the Pi 5. For the operating system, like I said, we are going to go with Ubuntu, but this is going to be through Docker, so you can use whatever operating system you prefer. I'm going to go general purpose, Ubuntu, and then go with the latest LTS Ubuntu server. Choose my storage. We're going to go with this one and hit next. Now, I do want to edit these settings here. Oh, cool. They saved. Setting up a username and password through this just makes everything oh, substantially easier. This is going to be my Docker Pi. I'm not going to connect to our Wi-Fi because this is going to be a server instance, so you should always have it plugged into Ethernet. Set your time zone. Over here under services, let's go ahead and enable SSH. If you want to use a key, that's where you could do this. Under options, that doesn't matter. Let's hit save and then yes. All right, just finished up, so let's get this plugged in here. Now, if you are a little curious to why I'm switching over some of my services to Raspberry Pi, I'm going to be trying to fit as much as my server rack as I can in this small unit. So do subscribe so you don't miss that video. And there it is, we can see it's on the IP address ending in 16. So let's go ahead and uh, SSH into that. So using the credentials that we created with the little uh, imager tool. Hey, there we go. There's a bunch of updates. So whenever you install Ubuntu server, server or any Linux server, we're going to go ahead and update everything. Sudo apt upgrade. Yes. Now, while it does that, we are going to be doing this with the Docker convenience script. Believe it or not, it does make installing Docker convenient. So I'm just gonna copy this curl and sh command, copy that. One thing that's important to note right here, if you click on it, you can actually see the script you're gonna be running. This is from Docker, it's, it's fine. But if you're going to run random scripts on anything, you should at least kind of go through the code and make sure nothing um, weird is going on. Ain't no way, ain't no way. All right, it did a kernel update, so I needed to completely reboot it. Now that it's updated, we could go ahead and grab this. Drop that in and then run the script and it will install basically everything we need to get going. Now, if you don't have much experience with Docker, I do recommend this guide right here on our website, the seven Docker basics for beginners. It goes over everything you need to know to install it. Uh, Non-root users, basic usage, including like networks, bind mounts, things like that. Do recommend you go ahead and read this. Under this non-root section, I'm gonna grab this command right here so I can add myself to the Docker group so I won't have to uh, sudo every time I run a command. So let's drop in that command to add me to the group. And then to automatically apply the change, we're gonna do the new grp command for Docker. And now if I type in, I think it's just id, we can see I am now part of the Docker group. So now we're gonna to want to install Portainer. This is gonna be a great way to spin up Docker Compose files and have a, a GUI representation of our Docker instance. So first we're gonna go ahead and create the volume with this command right here, docker create Protainer data. And then we are going to copy their Docker run command here. Drop this on in and before you hit enter, we are going to make a change. Instead of going with the latest tag, we are going to go with the short term support release. This is a slightly newer version, newer features, uh, more bug fixes. So let's hit enter and there we go. So now we should be able to jump over to our web browser here, head over to our port at 9443 and this is going to be HTTPS. 
go ahead and continue through that and then create our account. There we go. Let's create our user, save that. And now we are going to just click get started and then jump into our current Docker environment on this system. All right, so it is the next day. If you can't tell, I actually spent some time kind of playing around, configuring it, making sure that everything was perfect. And I do have documentation here on my repository under the immediate directory for this exact setup that we are doing here, as well as the R Compose YML. There'll be other stuff here added in the future, um, and I'll do a whole separate video on the R stack. For this one specifically, we are gonna be focusing on Gluten, which is the uh, VPN client, as well as Deluge VP, or not VP, Deluge BitTorrent client. This is my uh, general preference. I have good luck with it. I like it. It's awesome. And I do have other stuff here, but we're not gonna be focusing on all that. This would make this video way too long. But just a brief overview of how this is actually working. First, we have our actual uh, VPN client here. It's gonna be using WireGuard on the back end. You can use OpenVPN, but for my setup, WireGuard is perfect. We're doing cap add net admin. I do, we'll link to this, so it kind of gives an overview of exactly what it is and what it does. But basically, allow users root control of the core of the network stack, which this is a VPN kind of important. And here we have ports. Now, this gluten container doesn't actually use any ports, but these are kind of like pass-through ports. Instead of having the port under this container, for example, this is the BitTorrent client, we move it over here because this is going to have a network mode instead. Network mode service is gluten, and then it's ports are going to be right here. So this container is using this network. And that is essentially how you add these uh, network modes or pass through these containers that are in the same compose file. Later on, I'll show you how to do things that are outside of the compose file. Works very similarly, except for it's an environmental variable instead. And then here we have our volumes. So you can store your configurations wherever you want. Me, I do home, my root, and then I give every container its own folder, especially on this little Pi machine. This is only going to serve as a little Docker server. So everything is just has its own directory within that. And then we have our environmental variables, and I will kind of go over this real quick. I am using AirVPN at the moment. No, they're not a sponsor or anything like that. And the only reason I know about them is this right here. This is the client that I was using previously. This is like a uh, one of the predefined options. So there was Air, PIA, and a couple others. I used PIA for a while. They were a channel sponsor at one point, but I've been trying out AirVPN. If you go to their website, it looks like something that I would have designed as an 8th grader, and for some reason that makes me like it more. <laughs> you can go over all this if you want to, uh, but chances are if you're looking up this video, you already have a VPN provider, which is awesome. Because here on the Gluten Wiki, under the setup page, if we go over to providers, you can see they have an extensive list of all the supported uh, VPN providers. You have Peer, Proton, FastView, ju just a whole bunch of them. All the big dogs are here. If I go to AirVPN, for example, all of them give you a, a nice little compose file for everything that's required for that specific VPN provider. This one has both WireGuard and OpenVPN. Some of the other ones, for example, uh, private internet access here, they only have a OpenVPN option. So depending on what you use, you may have to kind of edit and change this around a bit. And for example, if I go back up to AirVPN, if I scroll all the way down, there's other additional variables and things that you could do. For example, one of them that we need to do is VPN port forwarding for AirVPN, which is just adding this and getting a actual port through their website. Which one of the reasons why I kind of like these guys is they do make it relatively easy. If I go over to the client area here, this is all the stuff they offer. I will note, uh, I have referrals here. I will link to this down below. Again, not sponsored, but if you do want to try this out, you use my referral, I will get a little kickback. So that's cool. But right here, config generator and all these other providers have a way to do this. But for this, we just go Linux. We want to use WireGuard. And then here we just select what we want to do. So for example, my configuration, I go over here to Vancouver, gives us details on the actual servers. And like theoretically, if I wanted this one, I would just check that, scroll all the way down to the bottom and then click on generate. Here, you could see it generated that. So then if I go ahead and open up this configuration, you could see we have a bunch of stuff. We have our private key, our uh, pre-share key, our IP address, so this is the one I would want to use. And really, that's the information that we need. And then you could see that here in the environmental variables, we have the WireGuard private key, pre-share key, and address, and then you put in the country and city of whatever server that you decide to go with. This is going to be important to actually get that uh, BitTorrent client to work. 
Some VPN providers aren't going to require this, but with Air VPN, you just go over here, and then we want to go to ports, go manage, and then this right here is my port. And we can see in Protainer, I just went stacks, create new stack. This is the editor. You pop in the port there, put in your keys, put in your WireGuard IP address. I'm going Vancouver, Canada. I do have a health check here, so that will make sure it is running and everything is fine. And then for this one, one thing you may want to change here is the environmental variables for the PUID and the group ID. If you're using it to download files directly onto your system, you could use whatever user you happen to be logged into. So I should probably open up a terminal and show you. Going to SSH back into our Raspberry Pi. There we go. And now if I just type in ID and then my username, you could see it. my UID is 1000 and my GID is 1003. Now you may be asking, why am I using 100? That is because these are actually all being downloaded to a network share. So if I go nano, Etsy, FS, tab, you can see here I have UID 1000, GID 100, and that is because that is the uh, user ID and group ID of my Unraid server, which is where I'm actually storing all this data. And then from there, you can see some folder mapping. So there are gonna be some folders that you need to create for this. One, of course, is the configuration directory. You can see if I go LS here, this right here is my configuration directory. That's really the only one you need for that. But wherever these are gonna be downloaded, I personally recommend having everything within the same share or folder, whatever it may be. As you can see here, I have data and that has books, downloads, uh, movies, music, shows, etc. And within downloads, we have complete, incomplete, and torrents. For my exact instance, this is going to be in media and data. And if I LS, you can see a lot of different things including downloads here if I CD into uh, my downloads LS you can see the two download clients I have and then if I go even further LS you could see that same exact file scheme that I have going on that's why this one is located in data if I scroll down this one's data this one's linked up to data so they all are linked into the exact same directory and we will go in and kind of actually configure those locations through the actual uh, services or applications themselves so once you have this configured, you have the ports in there for the services that you want to pass through the VPN, you go ahead and spin up your stack. What you can see I do have running here. Now over here in this uh, repository, I kind of threw together uh, how to actually test this. So first we're gonna test uh, the gluten or gluten uh, connectivity. We can just use this command right here, drop it in, run it, and then we can see we are running this from Vancouver, British Columbia, which is not where I am at. Now there's a ton of different ways to test the uh, VPN connectivity of a torrent client, but one of them again is just to kind of run the same thing. If I scroll down here, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the actual uh, terminal of the container. So drop that in and the container name that we are gonna be testing to make sure it's working is the Lulge. Enter, so now we are in. So now we just need to grab this uh, wgit for ipinfo.io, drop that in. And there we go, same thing, Vancouver, British Columbia, you can see where I'm connected to, all is good. So now actually in my torrent client, you can see this is one of the other ways you could test to see if your VPN is working. But some things you're gonna to want to do here is go over to preferences and switch up all your folders. So you can see I switched this to uh, incomplete, completed, and torrents. And then from there, if you go over to network, we are not going to be using a random port, get rid of that. I'm gonna copy over my actual port here and drop that on in, good to go, apply that. And then you could go through, kind of play with all these settings as you see fit. Uh, one thing you're gonna want to enable the label plugin for future use in a future video. But yeah, from there you should be good to go. I'm gonna hit okay. And just to test this, I went to Linux tracker here, got a very highly seeded uh, torrent, dropped it in through uh, add URL, pasted it in here, and you can see it is rocking and rolling. So now that that's working, we want to add a new container out of this Docker Compose file, granted it is gonna be on the same machine, and pass it through the VPN. To do this, I just grabbed this Docker run command. This is for Firefox, so uh, running this will give you just easy access to a, a Firefox container always passed through a VPN, just for convenience sake. This is gonna be running just locally, so I'm gonna change that to three. And right here, this is what we're gonna to want to change. You can see we have the port 3301. This one is HTTP, this is HTTPS for this container. I am going to need to make a quick configuration directory. So let's cd to my home, make the directory of Firefox. There we go. And we are not going to want these ports here, but what we are gonna want is this right here, network container gluten. 
So instead of the service, this is going to be a network variable to this container. So let's uh, put this right over here. And now here within Protainer, I'm going to go back to my stacks, go to my VPN stack, and go to my editor. So this is the uh, port 3000 to 3000. And then we want 3001 to 3001. And this is Firefox HTTPS. So let's go ahead and update our stack, update. And we can see that we have a success. So I'm gonna go back over here and just run this command. So let's copy that and drop it into our terminal, hit enter, and now it should be running. We can check this by going to our dashboard, going over to containers, and then we could see the Firefox one right here, not part of any specific stack. So now if I just simply navigate to it, we'll use the HTTPS one. So let's hit enter, advanced, accept and continue. This is Firefox, so now, we could check our IP just by going, what's my IP? I think .com is a website that works. There we go, here's our public IP address at Vancouver, British Columbia. So now we have a VPN set up that we can use in numerous containers and both a torrent client in the same compose linked up to it and a Firefox client outside of the stack that is also utilizing it. So that, that, that's really about it. Again, you can go to my documentation if you want to see my exact setup and some other tips and tricks that I find most important. Or if you want the whole spiel, I do recommend the uh, Gluten Wiki right here, which goes over everything that you're gonna need to know. For example, options here. Uh, we have health check, which I added. Port forwarding, open VP, just a ton of information. All this will be linked down below. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and Good. Bye.